I'm now honored to invite Dr. Ned Sharpless, Acting Commissioner of the Food and Drug Administration, to the podium to share his remarks. Dr. Sharpless previously served as the 15th Director of the National Cancer Institute and as dir Director of the North Carolina, University of North Carolina Lineberger Comprehensive Cancer Center. Dr. Sharpless has called for a greater effort in GBM and also has put his finger right on the problem of while other cancers are headed in the right direction, GBM, glioblastoma, along with several others, have been very, very stubborn and we need to move the needle. And I know Dr. Sharpless is not satisfied with the status quo as he's taken the helm of the FDA. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Sharpless. Thank you, David. I was really elated to be invited to this. I, um, you know, this is really a personal effort to me. I, I, I would love to see some progress in GME. You know, probably no cancer pisses me off more than GME. <laughs> you know, it would be great to really, and at the FDA, we would love to see those ideas come in so that we can approve them to help people with GBM. So, you know, this is uh, really something I was looking forward to do, and thank you for having me. I'd like to thank Senator Graham and Senator McSally, and, and uh, as well as Senators McConnell, Warren, Cinema and Markey for their um, sponsorship of this resolution for glioma awareness, glioblastoma awareness day. It's a, a, a great initiative. And, and, and you know, based on my experiences at, as a cancer center director, cancer researcher, uh, NCI director, and, and now acting FDA commissioner, whew, what a mouthful. Um, uh, you know, I, I had a chance to really get a, a various insights into this disease and, and, and see it from many perspectives. I certainly have had the experience of, of talking to patients and their loved ones about you know, the, the, the problems with therapy for GBM and, and the, the, the bad outcomes. I know as a doctor how tough this disease is to treat and how limited our options are for patients. And as someone who sort of directed the resources of the federal government toward topics related to cancer research and the public health, this cancer, GBM, is a particular where, as I said, I'd like to see us do more and make more progress. Because I think we have, you know, as I used to say at NCI, it's a special time for cancer research. We've made a lot of progress in a lot of places at a remarkable pace, but unfortunately GBM is not one of them. So uh, given my recent roles at NCI and FDA, I'm keenly aware of how hard it is to develop new therapies in this disease. It's really a place where we, we haven't had the progress we've had in other cancers. And I think for several reasons, of course, GBM is the cancer where we have this blood-brain barrier problem, which I think is a real issue about drug delivery to the brain and has limited uh, you know, the efficacy of agents for GBM. Um, and, 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 and I will say, when, when the White House asked me to move from NCI to FDA, uh, I was uh, eager to do that for lots of reasons, but I was also sad about that for many reasons. And one of the saddest reasons was that I, we had started some really fantastic things at, in GBM when I was there, and I wanted to see those things evolve and bloom. And now it's so great to hear Doug talk about how uh, they are, you know, how this great uh, trials meeting today is going to sort of put those initiatives in place. And so I think that's very exciting. Obviously, the NCI is in great hands with Doug leading it, as well as people like Mark and Ken here, you know, so with this great leadership in GBM, and I think. Uh, the NCI will be uh, doing splendidly well without little old me there anymore. But uh, so, uh, you know, great job uh, and uh, great to hear that progress, Doug. Uh, in my new role at the FDA, I can help the development of new therapeutic approaches and diagnostics for GBM based on the science funded by NCI and other sources. And although we are currently in an era of really unprecedented drug development to, for many cancers, progress has lagged in GBM. And the therapies that we have are too toxic. We recognize that glioblastoma is not only life-threatening, but it's like, it's like personally threatening. It's like self-threatening as the disease and therapy can rob patients of so much. Patients bear the burden of both a life-threatening illness and a progressive neurologic disease that affects their ability to work and to be with loved ones and, to, and their very sense of self. And recognize these challenges and the uniqueness of this disease, FDA has been committing to providing an all-hands-deck approach to supporting the drug and device development aimed at treating patients with GBM. To that end, we've worked closely with the National Brain Tumor Society and David uh, to co-sponsor workshops aimed at how best to design clinical trials and measure outcomes for patients with GBM. We've continued this partnership in the form of tri tr twice yearly roundtable discussions designed to bring together FDA and the academic community to discuss the challenges to produce uh, in drug development in GBM. The FDA has participated in planning these informal discussions with the aim of clarifying regulatory issues and providing our expertise. And then the FDA's Oncology Center of Excellence has established a mechanism to ensure that disease area expertise is provided when reviewing all products intended to help patients with GBM, as well as ensuring consistent advice is provided to drug developers on this important topic. The FDA has also several methods to streamline and fast track review of investigational therapies for life-threatening diseases, and I can think of no better candidate for those kinds of mechanisms than GBM. 
Uh, these include the breakthrough therapy designation, fast track review, priority review, and programs designed to move products through the review process more uh, uh, rapidly, as well as accelerated approval, where drugs are, uh, are allowed onto the market based on the, uh, the activity against certain endpoints. We're hopeful that progress will be made in this disease as multiple new technologies are brought to bear on this problem. The new exciting immunotherapies, new targeted therapies, new types of careful clinical trials with adaptive design and novel design to better find agents more quickly, and the better use of radiation therapy, surgery, novel devices, imaging, and other uh, therapeutic approaches in this space. It is my belief that with all this you know, science and great efforts brought to bear, we will build on previous work as well as the new ongoing science to take the significant, but in my opinion, two incremental progress we've made in this disease thus far and move it to even better therapies that will really make a difference in the lives of patients with this disease. And you no know, one would like to see progress more than me in that regard. So thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight and you know, let's get this done.